Hi, everybody. It's Reverend Therese, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And today is Sunday, and it is March 28th already. I invite you to join me this day. Tell me where you're from in the box. Tell me if you have a prayer request. Would you like to be on our email? All of those good things. And as we always do in unity, let us start in prayer. Close your outer eyes as you may be comfortable. And take a moment to get centered in your heart space. And we say thank you. Thank you, living, loving presence. For this day, for this holy week that's forthcoming, for all that we are together. Expressing as you in this world, we are grateful for all of the blessings seen and unseen, and so it is. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday. For me, it is an exciting, one of the most exciting weeks, I guess, besides the one leading up to Christmas, because it's such a great week of understanding by example, how it is we get to live our lives. In Unity, we talk all the time about us being the way Jesus lived his life in, this, in his world, right? In the world that he lived in. So I'm going to be talking all day about Jesus. The way shower, elder brother for us here in Unity, one of the many. But this week is a week that we get to celebrate because this is the week that changed the world. As you join us, please put in the box where you're from. And if you have a prayer request, if you would like the metaphysics that I'm going to be sending out each day in an email, let me know your email address as well. So I want to start with a story, well, kind of a, a little bit of a story, about a little boy named Johnny. And he got up on Sunday morning and was a little cranky and said he didn't want to go to church with his mom and his dad and his sister. So after much ado, <laughs> imagine, with a little one, he gets to stay home with his grandma. So he stays home with his grandma. And then when the family returns from their church service, right, that was when they were able to meet in person, they're carrying these palm branches. And Johnny says, well, what are those for? And his mother said, well, Johnny, people put them on the ground as Jesus came by on this day, Palm Sunday. And he said in a big huff, well, wouldn't you know it? The one day, the one Sunday, I don't go to church and Jesus shows up. So the story today of the week that changed, the, the beginning of the day, of the week that changed the world. I'm going to talk to you about the symbology and what does it all mean to us today? All these years later, what does it mean to us today? So it's a really big week in our consciousness this week, as you allow it to be. It's always about our consciousness, isn't it? I, I see you doing this and I'm grateful. The story, just like the Christmas story, is our personal story. And we get to figure out how does this week that is known as the week of preparing the way apply to us today? How do we get to prepare the way for ourselves? The biggest takeaway from today our time together, is that Jesus came to show us many things, right? And shared many stories. His life was a great example of what it looks like to live a life in purpose and on purpose for God. And I think the biggest takeaway for preparing the way is for us to understand how to live, not from the letter of the law, rather from the consciousness of the spirit of the law. That's the takeaway. I'll put it in an email to y'all later and put it in the box as well. 
Can we move from the letter of the law, the shoulds, the supposed tos, to the actual consciousness of the spirit of the law that is written for us and as us and through us even today? Because we get to live then into our purpose. How many of you live on your purpose? It's true. It feels so great. I love the saying that says, happy are they whose purpose has found them. Well, we know that certainly was the truth about uh, Jesus and how it is that he kind of shook stuff up, didn't he? To say it nicely. How he showed us, I think, how to show up every day to think and to feel and to act and to speak from a place of being grounded inside of us from the source that is us in through and as each of us, right? Rather than being ruled by the outside conditions, which he certainly met that day, Palm Sunday. So every moment, every choice, I think we get to choose between two different factors. Two choice points, I think is how they say it today. And little Johnny in our story, right, made the decision to stay home and that decision had consequences, right? That's what we talk about with our grandchildren or what we might call results, right? So he missed it. And the con there's two types of um, choices, right? There's condition-based decisions that are based on the outer of us, right? meaning that we're going to react to what happens outside of us. Or the second decision is one that's based on source, the inner direction from us. Why and how? Because we've stayed prayed up during the week, and certainly every morning, I hope, you wake up and get yourself centered in all that is of God before we the feet even hit the floor, and then, of course, throughout the day and at night. That's being spirit-led. Sourced-based decisions are inner-directed because we're listening not to our ego, but to our soul and the spirit that is leading us today, knowing that there's something far bigger than us out there. That helps with certain situations, doesn't it? Knowing there's something bigger than us. And in unity, we call that God. I call it God. Sourced, directed living means that we know that when we get into prayer and meditation and time within ourselves, that spirit will act in, through, and as each of us in all of our decision-making, in our actions, in our interactions with people that we meet, whether it's on Zoom like, or on Facebook like we're doing, in the store, out on the walkway that we're doing for our exercise, Right? So we're going to take a sacred walk together as we begin this sourced based living starting today. And it's called Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, which we also call the week that changed the world. And there's a book by a unity minister, Ernest Wilson, from back in the day called exactly that. It's a fabulous book to see how it is that this, the, um, Events of this week changed the entire world. They continue to change the world today. I love it. And so it prepares the way for us to live on purpose. Are you ready? Great, let's take it. So the talk title for today is Do Not Exalt Me, Exalt the Cause. And that's a quote, so do we understand, from Jesus. We're not sure, right? We weren't there. But it makes sense, doesn't it? It certainly makes sense to me today. Because it's about the consciousness from which Jesus lived. The consciousness that calls us higher every day to be living as God on purpose. To experience humility as we let go of our ego. Right? And what does ego mean? Edging God out. 
Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So we are experiencing a little bit of humility as we get centered in our divinity. And we know that there's going to be some overcoming and some triumph. That's an everyday thing, let alone a whole week thing, isn't it? Yes. So the affirmation that I chose for today and created was, I will keep the faith. I will run the course. I will be peace. I will be love. So say it with me. I will keep the faith. I will run or walk the course. I will be peace. I will be love. Breathe into that knowing. Let it have its way in through and as you. Let your shoulders lower. Let the tongue come off the roof of your mouth. Palm Sunday is in all four of the Gospels, so we believe then that it is actually that it actually happened and factually true, based on his history. And today I'm going to be using the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 to 41, as we talk about this. So you know, in unity, we look at the Bible metaphysically, right? How is it that it applies to our life today? What do the words mean in Greek? What do they mean in Hebrew? So that we can figure out where from they were created so that we can apply them today. Living today. Remember, that's what we focus on in unity. How did Jesus live his life? So today was the day that the scripture tells us Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem on the back of an unwritten donkey, or the one day I get to say an ass, right? And there were people all around and they waved these palm branches and they were welcoming him and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We're going to get into what that means later. And they laid the palm branches in front of him with their clothes and their cloaks as well. So that almost like a red carpet so that the donkey could in fact walk on them. I want to note here that we honor the way that Jesus lived his life by following the teachings and the examples today, 2021. It's not just some book we read and think, oh, I don't know, does it apply to me? Yes, yes. Today was a big teaching day for Jesus, this Palm Sunday. So what kind of teachings does it contain, Reverend Therese? Well, Palm Sunday is defined by Emily Cady in Lessons in Truth on page 189. Palm Sunday represents the last step in the enfoldment, in the preparation to the final step when the personality is entirely crucified and the individuality or the I am triumphs. That's what the whole week is about. So I've just given you, I've just given you the answer of what this week is about. We get to allow the personality of us to go away, right? To be crucified so that the individuality of us, that which is of God gets to triumph. And we know in unity that the cross represents crossing out error thinking. Get back to the truth of what it is that God wants us to know so that we can live in through and as each of us. So the book of Luke tells us about this week and this story today, that Jesus is a sturdy man. We've seen that in pictures, right, that we've seen. Great physical shape, wear sandals, right? And he walked everywhere. That's what all the stories tell us. Hundreds of miles on foot. Yes? 
and he had just completed a journey from Galilee across the Jordan, down through the towns, crossing again at the Jericho, and then up a steep slope from Jericho to Bethany to Bethpage. And then he stops, suddenly. And for the last part of his journey, which was literally only, the stories tell us, a couple hundred yards, he requested to ride into town on a donkey. Now you can read the scripture that tells that, you know, that he sent someone to go get the donkey and what all that means. I will also be doing that in our emails this week, what all of those metaphysical interpretations mean for each and every act. Today I'm kind of summarizing it all. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey because why? Because all of the people there expected a new kingdom to be established by Jesus. And truly, it was about the consciousness that Jesus was creating, an uplifting consciousness, as opposed to the Roman oppression, right? So back in those days, when a conquering king would ride into town, he would, by his very presence, show that he was there to conquer by riding into town on a horse. Now, when Jesus or other holy men would come into town, they would ride on the back of a donkey, teaching us, teaching the people then, teaching us today by example that I am coming in peace. Horses back in those days were used for war. So a man of peace would not ride in on a horse, would he? No, he's going to ride in on a donkey. Now, you and I all have learned back in the day when we were wee little lasses and lads, think about kindergarten, that actions speak louder than words. Yes? Well, that's what Jesus' actions affirmed, confirmed, and established on Palm Sunday. I come in peace. Now, I want you to say this to yourself. I come in peace. Close your outer eyes, put your hand on your heart, and say, I come in peace. Breathe into this. Every time somebody's up on your last nerve, take a moment. Visualize yourself coming in peace. So the donkey in the story represents humility. The characteristics of humility, of meekness, persistency, and endurance, right? And we also know that they were also, donkeys are, even today, stubborn. But this donkey had never been ridden before, right? So what it looks like and how we interpret that Jesus rode this colt means that he was able to make this colt, this donkey, be obedient to the will that he was there to represent, which was what? peace, and the very expression of love of God. So he rides in and he is the Prince of Peace. That's where all of that came from. Isn't it exciting? We know from the stories that Jesus wanted as many people as possible to see his message. Yes? Yes. So, being spirit-led, right, source-directed from inside, he deliberately made his final trip to Jerusalem at the time of the Jewish festival, which we know happened yesterday, but also happens, you know, historically, Passover. And Passover means that we pass over from the mortal mind to the spiritual mind. That's what it means metaphysically. Now, it was also a law back then that if you were coming into Jerusalem at this time of the Feast of Passover, you would walk.
The streets were crowded, thousands of people. Now, mind you, the reasons that the Pharisees and the Sadducees had their little selves in a ruffle is because on the other side of town was also a parade. This was an official, unofficial parade that Jesus was creating. Imagine being somebody who created things that invoked passion. So he's coming into town, right? Palm leaves are placed on the ground. Palm leaves represent grace and victory because you have to remember all of those folks who were not Christian, they were Jewish, believed that this was the Messiah, the new source that would get them out of this Roman oppression. Palm trees, and we're blessed to have them here in South Carolina, represent the unlimited resource of strength. Of course they do. They're so tall and they're thick and they're sturdy. So their branches represent grace. And we watch them, you know, when the wind blows. It's so beautiful. So they're laid down in front of Jesus as a sign of respect. Now, We've already said it, but I'll say it again. Jesus riding into Jerusalem created quite a stir and was, of course, a fulfillment of scripture from the Hebrew Bible. That's a study we can do. All of the things that Jesus did, how did they relate to the Hebrew Bible? And it's from Zechariah, chapter nine, verse nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud. O daughter of Jerusalem, lo, your king comes to you, triumphant, victorious, humble, and riding on an ass, on a colt. Now, we also have to remember that the writing of Zechariah happened about 480 years, give or take a few, before Jesus actually rode in to Jerusalem. Jesus knew the prophecy. He wanted the cause to be exalted. Not himself, the cause. The living of the word of God through in and as each of us. That's the cause. So what does Jerusalem mean? It's such a big part of this story, isn't it? Charles Fillmore, our co-founder of Unity, says that Jerusalem symbolizes the habitation of peace, the possession of peace, the vision of peace. So it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Jesus knows what's going to be happening this next week. I want to go somewhere where there would be peace as well, right? So he arrives in Jerusalem. Now we know don't we, from history, that back in that day, Jerusalem was a very important city, traced back about 3,000 years before Jesus even rode in to it. And it's still important today, Jerusalem. This is why we tell the stories, to remember why. It is holy ground, not only to those who follow Jesus, who call themselves Christians, right? There are those. And also those who are followers of Judaism as well as Islam. So what comes to me as I was preparing them, why is there not peace? If that's the center, the main hub of all of our religions, what the heck? Why is it not peaceful? Well, that's a talk for another day, isn't it? And I think, again, the story is written to emphasize that Jesus rides into Jerusalem, the habitation of peace, only to realize that the city is not living up to its name. I would say it's still not living up to its name today in 2021. Again, he knew what was going to happen, right? The betrayal, the trial, and the crucifixion coming. So he wept. That's what the scriptures tell us, that he wept because people just didn't get it. They did not get it. He had come 
to bring a whole new consciousness to the world that we might have life and have it abundantly. He came to prepare the way to move us, you and me, from a belief in the letter of the law to the consciousness of the spirit of the law. He came to move us from a God of judgment to a consciousness of a God of love. Yes. From a world of darkness to the consciousness of a world of light by how it is we choose our thoughts and remember the divinity that each of us is, which is the light of the world, right? So a world of judgment into the consciousness of the world that is forgiveness, right? And a world at war to a consciousness of a world that lives in and as peace. Everybody breathe. Do you see why this is such an exciting day? Why this week, Holy Week, Passion Week is so important? It is. Because as we wear the teachings, right, and we live them, we know that even though back in the day, the teachings, the parables, the miracles, all the love that Jesus had for his people, they didn't get and some of us still don't get it today, right? That the love of God lives in, through, and as each of us. And that's the demonstration that Jesus is in the world, even today. So I'm reminding, I'm remembering, hmm, I remember the times I didn't get it. There's still moments when I don't get it. That I'm loved, that I'm divine, that I have a purpose, that I am needed, you have a purpose. You are divine. You are needed. All of us, every single one of us, to bring peace to this world. So I'm asking you to breathe. And when you get stuck in a condition-based thoughts um, modality, so to speak, based on what's happening outside of us, switch it. Change your mind and say, I am going to move into my consciousness that is source-based, that is God living in through and as me. Because we know the story, don't we? That even as this week progresses, the disciples abandoned Jesus. Even though they knew all this, right? So we don't have to worry about abandoning Jesus as much as how much... And how often do we abandon ourselves? How often do we do that? So the crowds at Palm Sunday, which represent the outer thoughts, yeah, recognize, ah, there's some unusual movement happening of the mind, and I get to be and watch the very perfect example of peace. To move from the personal willfulness that the donkey represents into the obedience, everybody breathe through that word, of following the will of God in through and as each of us, right? To say, not my will, but thy will be done. Say it with me. Not my will, rather thy will be done. Because it stirs up commotion inside of us to clear our thinking right? And understand, hmm, where am I? Where am I? All the stories confirm. Jesus knew the message he was saying. He knew as the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means the joyful obedience to overcome error thinking. Hosanna to the son of David, right? Which David represents divine love individualized in you and in me. Yes. Blessed is the king. The king is the very essence that each of us has, directed by spirit, right? When we raise our thoughts up, who comes in the name of the Lord, 
The name of the Lord is the law that we know of. So let me read it. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, right? So we could say the joyful thoughts and obedience that we give to the divine love that is each of us expressing through us as our humanness and our divinity gets to be spirit-led as we choose to follow the spirit of the law. That's how metaphysics is done. How do we apply it today so that it doesn't seem so other-oriented or that we can't reach it? No, we get to reach it today. The Palm Sunday experience, this one that you and I are having in this moment, teaches us to breathe in to the humility that Jesus had when he rode in to Jerusalem, right? The habitation of peace by riding a donkey and embracing the peace Jerusalem experience that was all around him so that he could be peace in the world expressing. Where do you go for your peace? This is one of my sanctuary places. I hope you have some sanctuary places. So as we said in the beginning, the title of this talk is, don't exalt me, y'all, I'll add. Exalt the cause. I am, we believe Jesus would say, here to serve, not to be served. So I'm wondering this week, this holy week, how will you live into the truth of serving your highest divinity, your consciousness, letting go the outer things that don't matter? Someone else's opinion, let it go. The weather, let it go if it isn't serving you, right? Those thoughts that creep in, invite them to go to Jerusalem. Set aside time this week to have times of Jerusalem experiences for yourself, right? So what we know is today is, and I'm not sure who wrote this, one of my colleagues, that Palm Sunday and the Holy Week is a prelude to the grandest symphony known to humankind. We already know this, that death could not hold him. There is only one thing that can hold him. Do you know what it is? It's the meaning of life. It is love. We follow the way, the truth, yes? Each time we hold ourselves accountable for being love expressing in the world. And that's what today, that's what the week is all about. So close your outer eyes. Move from your head to your heart, and if it helps to put your hand on your heart, do so, as we take a moment to sit together in prayer. And we use our breath as a tool to take us ever deeper within, where each of us meets the God of our own understanding. Right? And we say and we pray, living, loving presence, thank you. Today, in this now moment, we affirm, each of us, that we will make a triumphant entry into a new and higher consciousness of God awareness coming through as us and in us. Each time we take a moment. Each time we take a moment. Allow us, each time we move from our head to our heart, to follow and to be the greatest example known to the world as we know it, bringing beauty into this now moment by realizing that we are here to serve and through the choices of free will, the biggest gift we got, we decide, each of us, through our spiritual discernment, to be spirit-led, 
and follow the example of today, the example of exalting the cause for love. And so it is as we breathe into this moment, we say silently to ourselves, thank you. And as you're comfortable, open your outer eyes. Take a moment, put your hand up to the screen and feel the energy, feel the love of those in this community everywhere. Not only today, every day that this talk is listened to all over the country, we are grateful for your presence. And as you're so moved, Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head receives, lovingly receives your practice of generosity that allows us to continue on with our mission to connect to each other and to be on purpose for God. We receive our love offerings on our website at www.unityofhiltonhead.org and we hit the practice generosity button and you can use PayPal or credit card. And then there's always the option of snail mail. Go ahead and send your notes and cards and letters and uh, we receive with love your checks and dark chocolate. Wink, wink. We are grateful for you. Thank you for completing my day today, spending time with us. Again, if you would like the metaphysics of this Easter story, make sure I have your email in the box and I will send those to you. Probably a story a day as we get uh, closer to the end of the week. Also, any prayer requests, we will hold them in confidence. And so I'm grateful. Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head is grateful for you for all that you are and the consciousness that you are, bringing this exalted cause of love to the world. And so it is. Amen. Reverend Therese signing off, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Amen. Many blessings.